Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. You're uh, with me on my commute. I figured we'd talk about an update around Bond 25. We thought it was going to be forever, right? We got that Danny Boyle news and not much else. And we thought, well, maybe the next day, maybe the next day, maybe the next week, we finally have something. We have a new director that's been officially announced. We try to stay away from too much speculation, but now we have a new director. And uh, sorry, we're uh, putting on the brakes. But we're not putting on the brakes for Bond 25. Oh, look what I did there. Um, Carrie Fukunaga. So Carrie Fukunaga, there was a little bit of a collective who. Um, but some people knew this person, knew this director, without even knowing quite what he was about. And that is the fact that he is Bond's first official American director. Kind of interesting. Some people uh, like that, some people don't. Um, Erwin Kirshner directed Never Say Never Again, but I don't think that's considered canon right now. But one of the most interesting things is that he's done a lot of TV. Um, a lot of you know him from True Detective Season 1. Now, if you haven't seen True Detective Season 1 and you want to get an idea of what this director can do, check it out. First of all, uh, I liked it. It's a little bit batshit crazy, but you can really tell that this director knows how to get a lot from his actors and he, he can take some really interesting very crazy content and pull it together i'm thinking and here comes a little speculation this might really kind of give us a little bit of gravitas to a psychological thriller gosh i would love a psychological thriller mixed with the bond kind of traditional aspects uh there is a quote from carrie basically coming out and saying this has been a dream of his uh the honor is all his so He's doing it all right from a PR standpoint. Now let's talk about the good and let's talk about the potential bad or the things we need to kind of watch for. First of all, the good, like I said, um, he's done some interesting direction. He's done some interesting uh, movie choices, a lot of TV, which means from a TV perspective, I think he's gonna be pretty efficient with his time. So the whole like, oh, time constraints, time constraints. I think he'll do well with that because he's used to that uh, kind of truncated TV time frame. Also, I think there's a benefit here with something else that a lot of people aren't talking about. He's a writer. He's done both co-writing as well as writing on his own and he's directed that writing. So from a writing perspective, from a producer perspective, from a direction perspective, he has the trifecta, he has the trinity. So I'm hoping that Eon gives him, they're never gonna give him full carte blanche, but gives him enough of the configuration or customization of a writer slash director to say, you know, this is not working, this is working, and he can see the bigger picture. Um, take a look back at some of the best James Bond movies. Uh, editors have made incredible directors because they understand how things are going to come together. I think writers also will make good directors because they can see the bigger picture. They know what the pen and the camera are doing together. So I have a lot of hope with this. Um, the other thing is he's young, he's enthusiastic. Um, I think he brings that kind of energy to the film. I think that's going to add something to it. All right, hmm. ah. let's talk about the potential negative. There is a lot of discussion going on right now that the guy has a history of walking away from projects. Uh, he quote unquote walked away from it. He quote unquote walked away from True Detective. I don't think he walked away from True Detective. He did season one. There was a season two that went to somebody else. Um, it, uh, I think there were some differences. Who knows who will ever know what really went on, but everybody has their reasons. Uh, there was a couple other things, projects that he quote unquote walked away from that he's quoted around. So this is kind of interesting. Sorry guys, I know you're moving around, but you're in my car right now and we've got people cutting lawns, holding up traffic. This is real life. Anyway, um, I, I think this could be potentially problematic. I think you've got Eon who <laughs> is obviously shaken and stirred Danny Boyle enough, um, but what is he doing? What, what are we doing with Carrie right now? Um, specifically to make him not want to walk away from Eon and producers who really kind of want to see it their way. That's going to be an interesting uh, formula that, that really comes together. So what else are we hearing through the uh, bond vines, the grapevines, if you will? Well, could this 
mean that we're going to be getting some announcements about uh, staff members, about actors. Uh, who knows? Maybe there's something in the wings for costume designers. Thing, people like Jenny Tamin. Could she possibly come back if there's no allegiance with Bukanaga, um, specifically around costume designers? Could we be getting our Jenny back? That would be amazing. I would love that. I think you would love that as well. So we'll have to see kind of where that kind of connects. But I think pretty soon we're going to get a lot of announcements and discussions around uh, Bond 25 coming to fruition now with a new director, hopefully at looking at uh, kind of a new topic and pushing it forward. It's interesting. There have been a couple people that have said about this director, hey, you know, maybe he can direct action. Two things. First of all, we're putting in a clip of six minutes of kind of nonstop footage from uh, from True Detective where there was an action scene that's pretty incredible. You gotta watch it. There's a link right down here below. You can watch it yourself, get an idea of what this guy can really do and, and mobilize against. But the other thing is, don't forget, a lot of the action scenes typically go to second unit directors. That's just how the Bond films are. Um, you got some unusual, unique things like Martin Campbell has done action storyboarding and helped with the action. But let's face it, the the kind of second runner-up, if you will, in the directorship, uh, usually focuses on direction, stuntmen, etc. And I think that's what we're going to get. So I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm actually slightly happier now than I was when I heard Danny Boyle being announced. Um, and again, I can't really put my finger on it. It may be because of Carrie's background, what he's done. There was something about Boyle directing that I just, I don't know, I couldn't get around. Maybe it was all the discussion of something PC. Um, quite frankly, now I'm really holding out that we're going to get a traditional Bond, but with a lot of crazy action, um, maybe a psychological thriller twist. Um, one thing we can't ignore is it's coming out on Valentine's Day. So let's talk about that for a moment. With Valentine's Day, it's an unusual choice for a couple reasons. First of all, does it make us maybe a little suspicious that this is going to be a significant love story? I don't mind a little bit, like Casino Royale tinged in there, but, you know, I don't want James Bond to be the notebook. Okay, that's, that's a huge difference. But the other thing is, from a blockbuster standpoint, from a business standpoint, Movies that come out on Valentine's Day, unless it is The Notebook or some sort of, you know, rom-com, they don't tend to do well, uh, especially action films. It's a really interesting choice. So what does this mean? Um, you know, take a look, and again, it's not the same movie, obviously, but take a look at Deadpool 2. With Deadpool 2, it was an action movie. I loved it. I thought it was great came out around Valentine's Day or maybe even on Valentine's Day, did not do well. Why? Guys, you're taking your gals out for Valentine's Day. Ladies, you're also maybe taking your guys or gals out or whatever proclivity you have for Valentine's Day. That is a thing where you go out to dinner. It's a romantic night. You know, Hallmark, unfortunately, in the 1950s and 1960, bamboozled us into buying cards and chocolates and taking people out for overly expensive, not so delicious meals. They didn't get us prepped for a Bond movie. Now, happily, my Bond girl, Danielle, she's great about it. Uh, crap, if we get to go to premiere on Valentine's night, tch, that's, a, that's a night well spent, my friends. But damn, I mean, what are, what is like, you know, the mass population going to do? Um, I even posted a couple things on Instagram with Valentine's Day cards to preheat the discussion that you're going to see a Bond film on Valentine's Day. It's strange. But maybe as we get to see a trailer, maybe as we get more information, we'll understand their thinking a little bit more. Or was it the only slot open in 2020? I don't know. We'll also have to see what they're up against. Uh, I think there's a live action Disney film that comes out that same night. We'll have to see, but uh, it'll be interesting nonetheless. However, with this news, we can all start embracing ourselves, start looking for more information, and of course, we're all gonna start researching what this guy has done before, because we wanna understand his style moving forward. Anyway, 
short update on Bond 25. Hope to get more news soon. But in the meantime, this is the Bond Experience. This is David Zaritsky, and we will talk to you all very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. Hi. Didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor, move, 